Hey, hello there, my name is Dragon Wolf, and today I'm going to be taking you through my first ever Let's Play. I've decided to go with Broken Sword, the very first one, Shadow of the Templars, and it is a Director's Cut. Now, the difference between uh, the old one and the Director's Cut is going to upgrade graphics and a couple of bits through the game you actually play as Nico. Uh, one of these is right at the start. So I'm going to be taking you through maybe the first half an hour, 40 minutes or so. And this will all be kind of new for me, for Nico. The main game I've played before, but it's been a long time. So let's kick off and see what the new kind of Nico Collard parts are. Paris. City of love, romance and dreams. So they say. I used to say it too. But ever since that day. That's creepy. Day of the murder. I've always associated my beloved Paris with death. I was at home having a bath when my editor called. Collar, get your ass over to the Palais Royale now. You got an interview with Pierre Carchon. Yes, the Pierre Carchon. No photos, so leave your gear at home. He asked for you personally. Don't ask me why. Anyhow, this could be big, so if he makes a pass, don't forget. Just smile, say yes, and keep taking notes. So charming, and so very apt. Pierre Carchon was a media king, a national hero, and one of the most infamous adulterers in Europe. He and his wife Imelda were just one step down from royalty. She looks really happy about Whoa, the fact they might make a pack. Oh. But unless you humor them, they don't go away. That's creepy. That's creepy. Here I was. The palace of the media king and the ice queen. I pressed the doorbell and set in motion yeah. a chain of events which would change my life forever. Yes? What is it? Madame, my name is Nico Collard. I'm here to see Monsieur Carchon. Come up. We're on the first floor. Don't you have stairs? Madame Carchon, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure you're certainly living up to a reputation. Will you be staying for the interview? Mademoiselle, I know little of my husband's business affairs, and I care even less. I certainly have no intention of watching him pour over yet another pretty little journalist. Pretty? You're too kind, madame. Ah, the talented and very beautiful Mademoiselle Collard. Such a pleasure to meet you at last. Monsieur Carchon. I am honored. Oh, I'm sure you are. Call me Pierre, please. <laughs> but I do not flatter you idly. I was a friend of your father. He was a great man. My father? He never mentioned. He and I were very close. And then his death. So tragic. I must... <laughs> Imelda, your damned cat's in my study again. Another Ming vase, I suppose. Excuse me for one moment, my dear girl. You journalists are getting younger each year. Perhaps it's the rest of the world getting older, madame. 
That was no cat. My God, what? Monsieur Garçon. Why would you go near him? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh my God. He's dead. I must call the police. You'd better stay here. There was a man. It was the mime. Do you think he... Well, I believe we can rule out suicide, don't you? No wonder they called her the Ice Queen. She would have been top on my list of suspects if I hadn't seen the attacker myself. And if I hadn't come across a couple of murders just like this already. One of the most important men in Europe murdered. And here was I, Nico Coulard, alone at the scene of the crime. Should I wait for the cops or start my own investigation? It was a no-brainer. And thus begins the game proper. Uh, okay. Something's lighting up. Oh, so let's just analyze it. It's quite a long video. This game blew me away back in the day because it was fully voice acted. Um, that is kind of commonplace now. Um, but when it was released, to have something fully voice acted and to have even sort of like lip syncing, any attempt of lip syncing. Remember, this was back in 1996. This was a fair old time, and this part is newer, but that was a fair old time ago to have voice acting. So let's have a wee look. So it's a point and click adventure, as you can tell. Um, let's have a wee look. So the window in the video was definitely iffy. A small round piece of glass had been cut out of the pane. This was a professional job. Also, that video, it's like she basically got told, yeah, if the old dude wants to sleep with you, just go with it and take some notes. Dear God, 1996 was a different time. <laughs> a bust of Pierre Cochon, humble servant of La France. The bookcase was filled with obscure first editions. Bust. Pierre Cochon again. Hmm. The police could turn up at any minute. Somewhere there were clues to the murder and I needed to find them. A medieval pageant. Original, no doubt. The tapestry must have cost a fortune. Now, what I remember about this game is you have to click on everything. A Louis XIV table with an antique cloth. Imelda had taste, but hey, with a husband that rich, taste is easy. No, meow. I reckoned that cloth might just turn out to be useful. Cool. Tenuous link, but okay. Even my fingernail wouldn't fit into such a small hole. That's what she said. Uh, <coughs> okay. Ah. Imelda had talent, but I certainly wasn't going to tell her that. It was a tube of acrylic paint. French ultramarine. Just the colour I was after for my bathroom. I'm sorry, I have to go. Someone is... Young lady, what are you doing? Oh, this paint. <laughs> it's my favourite colour. For God's sake, keep the damn stuff. French ultramarine. I can't really imagine that the Warhammer universe. But hey, there you go. So I can leave, which I don't think I'm gonna do. I can go. Oh, maybe I can call later. Even the telephone was antique. 
Never trust anyone who owns a phone like that. There was no one I needed. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, okay, okay. So that's a single. If it pops up, I can speak to her with left click or I can look at her with right click. Imelda looked shocked, but still every bit is hostile. And that's interesting. Excuse me, madame. Yes? Ah, right, so I can ask her about things. I can ask her about people. Her husband. Creepy ass mime. Or this person. I have no idea who this is, so let's go with that. How did your husband know my father? I have no idea. You didn't know him? Thierry Coulard? Pierre knew a lot of people I didn't know, most of them women. I am so sorry for your loss, madame. No, you're not. You're a journalist. <laughs> Journalists don't feel sorry. Not true. We shall see. Why did your husband send for me? What did he want to discuss? I have no idea. His business was his business. He never told you anything? No. And frankly, I preferred it that way. Ah, blissful ignorance. Why would a mime want to kill your husband? Pierre had plenty of enemies. Half the husbands in Paris for a start. This is quite a scoop for you. I suppose you're already inventing the headlines. Just because I am a journalist. Don't patronize me. You're all cut from the same cloth. Do you have any moral sense at all? Uh, yes? Yes. That's why I do this job. You do it to see your name in print. As if. My editor gets the byline, I just do the work. Well, don't expect my sympathy. The police will be here soon, madame. Is there anybody you would like me to contact? Family? Friends? No. I have no family. Pierre and I were... He was all I had, really. Not much, was it? The dutiful wife? That was my role. He never talked, never let me in. I know one thing, madame. What? If you want to find out who killed your husband, then you let me do the job, not the police. Why? How do I know I can trust you? <laughs> okay, uh, uh, Your husband invited me here today because he needed me. I think he knew somebody wanted to kill him, and he knew I could help. I doubt it was your database he was after. You're wrong. <laughs> I was onto his killers already. I am sure of it. Please, you owe it to him. I don't know. All I need is a few more minutes to look around before the police come. You really do have a moral sense, don't you? I trust so few people. And perhaps Pierre really did think that you could help. Of course it wouldn't have stopped him seducing you too. Uh. Here, take this. It's the key to the drawing room next to the library at the end of the hall. It was Pierre's room. I rarely went in there. I couldn't. I was too scared of what I might find. Definitely blissful Thank ignorance. Thank you. I promise you won't regret this. Oh. Things are lighting up. Okay. Now that I think about it, I should probably read this part out just so everyone gets a sense of what it is. <laughs> Palais Royal, Pierre Carchon interview. Relaxing in the bath and I was discovered by a phone call from my editor, Ronnie. He asked me to interview Pierre Carchon, media tycoon and serial philanderer. On the case like a shot. She seems way too up for this. Creepy mime outside Carchon's apartment. Madame Carchon cold as ice. Monsieur Carchon suave and charming, living up to his reputation. Played along with his flirtation. The sound of a vase smashing, or vase, whatever. And Monsieur Carchon went to investigate. A gunshot. I rushed to the room and found the mime standing over Carchon's body. The mime beckoned. As I stupidly walked over to the creepy mime, he punched me and knocked me out. Came to, to find Imelda distraught. Almost feel sorry for her. 
must get to the bottom of this story before the police arrive. This is a break I've waited for. Imelda doesn't trust me very much. Fortunately, she's chosen to let me investigate her husband's murder. Here in Scotland, if you're of an age, there's a very famous saying from the show Tiger, there's been a murder. So we'll go with that. Let's see, it was this room at the end. The door was locked. You have the key, woman. Now we were getting somewhere. I actually need to tell her to use keys. Okay. Light switch? I didn't need the lights on. It was light enough <coughs> already. The painting showed the cachons together in love. As the poet said, the past is a different country. Or did I read that in a fortune cookie? The cachons. Noblesse oblige. Now, what do you possibly think the I meant was have attached to firmly touch? to the wall. Could it be this very obvious large button here? Aha! Uh -huh. There was a small button hidden in the picture frame. Small? There was the very faintest of clicks. Behind the picture was a safe. The safe was locked. I needed the key. Okay. This wasn't the time for me to lie on the sofa doing my Marie Antoinette impression. Though it is very popular at parties, especially with gay guys. Don't ask me why. <laughs> the sofa was antique. For one horrible moment, I had an image of a naked cochon wriggling around on it with a young journalist. Oh. Oh, <laughs> no thank you. Desk. Okay. As expected, the desk was yet another priceless antique. Yawn. The blotter and in tray had clearly been placed with mathematical precision. I didn't need a sheet of blotting paper. Not while it was blank. I didn't want to take the tray, but I knew that I could use it. The in-tray, like everything else okay. in this place, was beautiful. One day, I was going to have an in-tray like that. Even if I had to sell my apartment to pay for it. Yeah, yeah, I've the street with my in-tray. <laughs> my heart skipped a beat. It was a carved elephant. But not just any carved elephant. It had been made by my father. I knew for certain because in my apartment I had its exact twin. Carved into a box he had made. So Cochon had known my father. They really must have been friends. I decided to take uh -huh. the carved elephant. It clearly meant nothing to Imelda. Candles there, uh, entry, blotter, okay. Oops. I need to stop pressing escape. Oh, what's this way? It was a back door. Locked. Not surprising, really. This is where this game shines, gives me a light. It should be really easy. There should be a thing. Where is the, th the thing? Mimes and gums don't usually go together, but I had an idea that this was no ordinary mime. I'd come across this murderer before and written about him. The costume killer, at least that's what I called him. Okay, hair clip. Clear and nice and it easy. was one of my hair clips. My favourite, in fact. It must have fallen when I was knocked down. I closed his eyes. 
It was the least I could do for the poor fellow. I had closed his eyes. Rigor mortis hadn't set in yet. Okay. Hello. Some people hate searching corpses for clues. Me, I'm okay with it. Reminds me of an old boyfriend. What the hell did you and your old boyfriend go up to at night? Carchon had been shot. Well, yeah. What's this, though? In his pocket, I found a ticket stamped Bateau de la Conciergerie. Taking the ticket meant I tampered with the evidence. There was no going back now. Okay. Yep, we have some stuff. Don't know why that was slashing, but there you go. I'm betting. That's key for the room. That's oh. Uh, it's not the hair club in it, really. Aha! Uh -huh. Ta da! You are just so damn good at this stuff. Instead of comforting Imelda, I was ransacking her flat. Why? Because there was something going on here. And I had to get answers before the cops arrived. And hey, she'd been rude to me, so she had it coming. <laughs> she'd been rude to me, she had it coming. I have a moral sense. Honest. You just lost your husband, but you're still a bitch. <laughs> right, safe. Because we already know she won't use keys, she clearly has. What the hell is that? In the safe was some kind of artifact. There were strange symbols on its surface. It looked like the printer's blocks I'd made at art school. If there was one thing I'd learned about symbols, they are always important. But these symbols scratched into stone were impossible to read. I needed to find a way of printing them. At least the stone was round. But <laughs> what could I use for ink? And what could I print on? Sure, I was stealing, but I knew Imelda didn't know about the artifact. And Carchon was past caring. So I'll just lift it. <laughs> hmm, what could we possibly use for printing? And what could we possibly print it on, I wonder? Let's have a look at this. The artifact was like an old printer's block, covered in symbols. Okay, let's go over. So... The tube of paint... Yeah, 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 I know what it is. Come back! Putting the paint straight on the cylinder would be too messy. The paint would go everywhere. Um, maybe I'll do it for me automatically. The blotter it. was flat already. Rolling the cylinder across it would achieve nothing. Uh... I didn't want to take the tray, but I knew that I could use it. But she knows she can. Ah, ha, ha. She knows she can use it. She doesn't want to take it. Let's fill it with blue paint. Really nice entry that we've just I'd spread blue ruined. paint over the bottom of the tray. It was ruined. I was a very bad, bad girl, but also quite a clever one. I hope I a very bad, bad girl. Not the paint not had been squeezed from the tube. I rolled the artifact in the paint until it was completely coated. There were still some traces of paint in the tray. It would never be the same again. Yeah, no, no shit. <laughs> Genius. The roller and the paint worked just as I planned. But what did it say? A secret message had been printed on the blotting paper. 
It was some kind of coded message. It read, Sub Judici. I may not have learned a lot as a journalist, but that was a term I knew well. It means a legal case that is before the courts. Below it was a sequence of letters that made no sense. I suddenly realized there was a connection between the boat ticket and the coded message. The boat Hello. ticket was stamped Bateau de la Conciergerie. The Conciergerie on the Ile de la Cité by the river housed the ancient law courts. So, sub judice could in this case mean literally under the law courts, below the conciergerie. I was pretty sure I'd found all I could here. And besides, all this opulence was making me pine for my regular life of poverty. This was a huge story. It was also one heck of a puzzle with a lot of pieces missing. But I was going to crack it. And if I could just remember the name of that fancy prize you get for being an ace journalist, I was definitely going to win it this time. So she's a journalist that can't remember her name for a Pulitzer Prize. And she lives a life of poverty, but can afford some sort of house or flat in Paris. Okay. I'm also very, very glad that she made that connection, because I would have not. <laughs> Taking we just leave now. Him before we go. Did you find anything useful? This carving. Do you know anything about it? It was Pierre's. What does the statue have to do with? Please, I need to know. He was given it by a friend. Something to do with Africa. He never explained any more. No. But I think it was important to him. Always on display. Why? It was carved by my father. Oh, I see. I didn't know. Imelda. I will do everything I can to find the killer. Thank you, my dear. And if the police ask, don't worry. You were never here. Sub judice was the key. I was going to have to find a way under the conciergerie. I decided to head straight for the quayside on the Ile de la Cité. If there was a way of getting under the conciergerie, it would have to be from there. Da, da, da. Right, so Conchon wasn't the type for messing about on the river. He was up to something down here. Something that got him killed. I will pick it up next time um, from the conciergerie and see what happens. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you're enjoying this. Um, feel free to leave any comments, anything I can improve on. I see that's my very first set of Let's Plays. So any feedback would be fantastic. Thank you and I will see you all again.